Okay, thank you for bearing with me. Um, good morning, everybody. Sure. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Please don't try to act bougie with me, Truman. This is Truman. Don't do that. Don't act like I can't talk. This is the Bronx. So my name is Dennis, and I'm here to talk to you about colleges and universities. A little bit about me. I'm from Yonkers, New York. I'm 22, so I'm not like you know too much of an old head. But I'm 22. I'm a senior in college, and I didn't think that I would ever really be standing up in front of people talking about colleges. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna tell you why. I was a regular degular schmegular in college and you know high school I was not really doing anything crazy but when I got to college college was the major key that really changed me to be who I am right now I go to school in South Carolina how many of y'all ever been outside of New York before ever been outside all right so I know the feeling you get when you leave New York and like how different it is when you go someplace else and then I feel you get when you come back you know what I'm talking about like the I'm just coming back to New York feel and it looks different it seems kind of weird like okay that feeling, I get that feeling all the time because I'm always traveling, but it wasn't always like that. My dream school was Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, Morehouse. But the bag that they wanted for that school, like the amount of money they wanted, I had like a brown paper bag of a bank account and they wanted like the hefty bag of like $50,000 a year and I couldn't do that, so I wasn't doing that. I had to come to terms with the school I ended up going to, Claflin University in South Carolina. So I go to school, fellas. I don't care how good you think she looks in Truman or in the Bronx, but when you go to college and you see a bunch of students from all over the world, you start to realize, you know, why you need to stay on track. What am I talking about? My school has like 2,000 students, and the school next to us is a state school with about 3,000, 4,000 students, and the technical school next to us with like another 2,000 students. So until you get close to 10,000 students together on a Friday night with no parental guidance, Everybody's between the ages of 18 and 23. Y'all never been to a party before, Truman. I'm telling you now. You're, you're, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter parties. Yo, bro, you saw the flyer DM it to me parties. And the actual party promoters on campus parties? Celebrities coming to the party parties? It's a party. Love and hip hop. Who coming? Where are you? I'm going to be there, bro. So anyway, I'm in college, right? And how many of you actually want to go to college before I even continue? Why? What's the point of going? You can't get knowledge without college? You can't get a degree without it. Okay. What else? Why y'all want to go? Y'all all raise your hand, most of y'all. For the money. You can't get money without college? Did Beyonce go to college? I mean, but not everybody can dance. I like that, though. Not everybody can sing, right? And then most of all, when you're trying to make money without a degree, you're going to get your money. That's a fact. So it's like security, right? Like, you know, it's not, it's not promising you nothing, but, you know, just to know what you have that to fall back on, right? All right, cool. I'm in school. The first week of school was so litty. Like, I'm telling you, I'm in South Carolina, okay? When I'm there, everybody's telling me I have an accent. I don't think I talk with an accent. I think that I talk regular, you know, but everybody said I have an accent. I'm in a cafeteria. Cafeteria is three floors. Three floor, all you can eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner. See, the kid put some weight on, wasn't always big. But breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? All you can eat. So I'm online one day, and it's a shorty standing next to me. And I was like, I want grits, eggs. I'm telling the lunch lady what I want. I want grits, eggs. I don't want any sausage. And shorty right here, like, oh my God, I can tell you from New York. <laughs> I'm like, how? And then she's like, because like, the way that you're talking, like, y'all talk like y'all mad. You say you want the grits, eggs, and sausage. I'm like, that's how you're supposed to say it. She's like, no, it's not. Like, you say sausage, it's sausage. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. Like, it's sausage. I'm about to argue with her. Like, it's sausage. Like, no, it's not. It's definitely sausage. Like, everybody in New York always talk like they mad. I'm like, how is me saying sausage sound like I'm mad? But all right. So the week is going on. You know, it's orientation week. Most colleges, the first week, they call it orientation. So, you know, I'm learning, meeting other people. You'll follow me on the gram, follow me on Twitter, all this stuff going on, right? So this other girl... Because I was like, yo, it's dumb hot outside. I need some water. Same thing. Hey, um, you from New York? I'm like, yeah, how can you tell? Like, because the way you said water, like, why you say it like that? Like, water, like, y'all put an oil in there. I'm like, that's how you say it. It's water. No, it's not. It's water. 
I'm like, wait, what you said? She's like, it's water. Like, why y'all so hard on y'all words? I'm like, how am I being? Because like, I didn't realize how we talk is how we talk. But when you think about it, how many of y'all ever been like to Harlem or Brooklyn before, right? So y'all know Harlem people don't talk like people from the Bronx. You know, people in Brooklyn don't talk like people in Yonkers. So I, I'm like, I, I heard you, sis, I guess. So time is moving on. Then it's time to buy my textbooks because orientation week is over. Everybody's standing online like their grandmother died when it's time to buy textbooks. And I don't know why. I'm like, just because y'all don't got no money. Don't mean that I ain't got no money. Because I had won a $100 scholarship. No, $100. So I was all right. I had my little $700, $800 saved up in the bank, which for y'all isn't you know, a lot because some of y'all scammers. But for me, $800. <laughs> for me, $800 was, now I, I see some of y'all on Twitter and Instagram. Hey, yo, bro, you trying to turn $50 and $5,000. Like, so, you know, <laughs> y'all laughing. The woods with your neck down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I was like, OK, cool. I had my little bit of money. I'm online to get my textbooks. And ladies, I don't know how, not to come for the ladies. Fellas, I'm going to come for y'all in a minute, too. But like, some of y'all could look at a dude and automatically assume, just based on how he looks, if he has money or not. And I don't know how I do that. So what am I talking about? I'm online, and she's looking like, um, you sure you want to buy all these books at the same time? I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, you sure you want to buy all these books at the same time? I'm like, yo, sis, don't ever play yourself. Yes. I want to buy all six of these books at the same time. I went to a public school. All our textbooks were free. Free. You go to school, the textbooks are there, you leave them under the desk, you go to your next class, whatever. My math textbook came to like $360 when she scanned that book. $360. Some of y'all don't even spend that much on J's because you know Canal Street just a train ride away. Like, so I'm like $360. But I had like my $800 in the bank, but I couldn't act like I didn't have it. So you know I'm like, yeah, that's light. I expected to spend 300 something dollars on one book. Like, by the time she was done scanning all of my books, I had spent close to $1,000 on textbooks. And the only reason why I didn't buy them all is because I had to hit my mom up like, Ma, I need a little bit more bread. $1,000 on textbooks. $1,000 on textbooks. On textbooks. That's not talking detergent to clean your clothes. That's not soap, because you know some of us want to smell good. That's not new clothes, because I want to go to college and flex. You know, that's not haircuts and lineups every other week because, you know, the kid got to look good. Like, none of that. And when I first went to college, I didn't dress in khakis and dress shirts. So, you know, I had J's, the Louis bag and all that. I had to keep up the, the New York standard, you know? And I couldn't do that with no money in the bank. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Craziest thing that happened, and then I'll talk to you about the education and the fun stuff, is that I was in the auditorium because we had like an orientation event, right? And it was a huge auditorium. It's college. And there's people sitting next to me, you know, all over. New York, we love to talk, which is crazy because when we in New York, we don't talk. Like on a sub, we don't just talk to random people. But in co on college campuses, everybody talks. So, you know, dude sitting next to me, and I'm like, yo, bro, what's good? My name is Dennis. Where you from? And you know, like how people give you that, that look, like they don't want to talk to you, like, yo, what's good? Like, You're not going to talk to me like that. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm from, I'm from New York, bro. Where you from? Chicago. I ain't, I ain't scared, you know, Chicago, I'm from New York. I'm like, okay, well, um, yo, bro, is it true what they say? Like, I heard this y'all fight a lot in Chicago. Is that true? Because I'm from New York, and everybody in New York says Chicago's kind of bad. So I'm in a huge auditorium, right? I'm sitting over there by where that door is. Imagine, like, three times the size of this room. It's a dude sitting all the way over there, like, the last seat. The dude sitting next to me stands up and goes, hey, G, we fight a lot in Chicago. Till this day, I don't know how that dude knew he was talking to him. So like 40 seats down this way, all the way on the other side of West Bubble Woods in this auditorium, right here, this is the dude he's talking to. Dude stands up and he's like, hey G, what he said? I'm like, yo, it's about to be real. College just got started, I didn't even take classes yet. All the way over here, dude's like, hey G, we fight a lot in Chicago. Dude over there, nah, we don't fight a lot, we shoot now. What? <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, right, that's, okay. Come to find out, the dude sitting next to me, the dude on the end, and about seven or eight of the young men between, uh, between them are all on full scholarship for baseball. Full scholarship for baseball. I'm from New York, I'm down south trying to flex, and I'm broke, and they're on full scholarship for baseball. And I know that one of the dudes was mad because he was like, I think it was like the third semester, like, yo, bro, my scholarship didn't cover everything. I'm like, yo, how much you gotta pay? I gotta pay $300. I'm like, oh, you got to put up is $300 for the whole year? Yeah, my dad don't want to do that, though. I'm like, 
like, bro, I had to take out loans for the whole thing. You had to worry about $300. Like, so it was interesting. Why am I telling you that? Because everybody in the Bronx want to be Stephon Curry or LeBron James, and they're playing baseball. So, you know, scholarships, it's important. Make sure you apply. So time is moving on and classes start, and I'm taking my first classes. Yo, when I tell you college was so easy for me, I got like a 75, 80 on my first math test, Liddy, science test, 75, 80, Liddy. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, like, yeah, college is dumb easy. Everybody bugs. Then week number two came, and week number two went from, like, you know, minor league baseball to major league baseball, like, going from, like, the D league to, you know, Michael Jordan type basketball now. I was, those 75s and 80s was turning into like 45s and 30s, and I was like, pause. <laughs> when did the, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I'm like, none of this stuff we went over in class. The professor's like, no, we didn't go over it in class. I'm like, you know that. Like, so how you putting something on a test we didn't go over in class? Well, if you look in your textbook, it's in chapter two of your textbook. I'm like, bro, who really gonna read the whole chapter two of the textbook, though? Like, that's college. You have to read all the chapter two of the textbook. High school, I never did that before. So, you know, you look at the vocabulary words in the book, you pick out what they mean, you write it, you know, you're good. So I was like, all right, I heard you. So week number three, I read all of chapter three, science, all of chapter three, math. Like, cool, I'm ready for the quiz. Now I'm getting like 20s and 17s. Like, I'm like <laughs> failing, failing, failing. And I know some of y'all like, how? Like, we're not talking high school, we're talking college. And college work is up here. And the excuse that you can't use, which I love to say, I don't know about the Bronx, but I know it's a Yonkers thing. Yo, miss, I ain't even learned this. Like, nah, they never taught me this, miss. I don't know this. Like, yo, bro, I don't, nah, like, what is that? Nah, my old teacher never taught us this. We don't know this. It's brand new. So that doesn't fly in college. So I was like, all right, I actually got to start studying. So I started studying, and I'm still failing. I'm like, yo, come on. So now I'm, I'm ready to drop out. It was like the second month. September is when school starts in New York. August is when it starts in other states. So it was like September-ish, October. And my eyes started to, you know, get a little red. You know, water started, you know, coming out, whatever. I was crying in my dorm, like, yo, ready to drop. I don't want to be out here no more. I don't like this. You know, I'm down south. It's mad high. Ain't no, you know, more Metro cars and Tim's and fitted hats and bacon, egg, and cheeses no more. And bagels and butter rolls. Like, yo, I don't want to be out here. So I'm telling everybody I'm dropping out. Yo, I'm done. I'm dropping out. I'm dropping out. I'm dropping out. Yo, it's lit. Yo, it was nice meeting y'all. Yo, I hope y'all still follow me, but I'm dropping out. Like, nah, it's a dub. So I don't know if it's a Bronx thing, because I can only speak for Yonkers, but sometimes some of us make plans that require money that we don't have, but we make plans with fake money. So when we do get the money, we know what we want to do. So I'm like, Ma, I'm dropping out of school. I'm not staying here anymore. I'm, out. I'm telling you, as soon as I get some money, I'm leaving. Like, Ma, all I need is whatever, whatever amount of dollars. Mind you, I didn't have the money. My mom's like, you're staying in school. I'm like, mom, no one stay out here. I'm failing. It got so bad. I got a letter from the school saying, like, we noticed that you're having some problems. I was like, yo, that's that's crazy. When your school can send you a letter saying, like, yo, you struggling. I'm like, yo, I'm really struggling. Like, so I was like so close to academic probation. It was like that, like that. So all this time is going on. Finally, Thanksgiving break comes, and I'm back home. I'm back in New York. And nothing changed. The place I was really trying to get to. Back to New York, nothing changed. The trains was the same. The buses were the same. Like, eight girls I went to school with was pregnant, which is crazy. Like, because I promise it's like they must have called each other like, sis, let's all get pregnant. Like, it's crazy. Because <laughs> all of them was pregnant. I was like, yo, how? how? Like, nah, bro, such and such is pregnant. And her cousin and her other cousin. I'm like, yo, I've been going for like two and a half months. How everybody pregnant now? Like, it was so crazy. So nothing changed. People were hugging the block that wasn't hugging them back. Same people who didn't graduate were super seniors. Some of them just said they're not graduating at all. I said, fine. So I went back to school, and I pulled that failing grade up, and I started grinding, 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 and I pulled it up to a 4.0. So now that I had that 4.0, I started applying for more scholarships because the key to staying in school is to be able to afford it. And I don't know about y'all, but I couldn't afford it, so I had to make sure I had scholarships to afford it. So I applied. By the time I was done with my freshman year of college, from my high school year, my senior year of high school, my freshman year of college, I ended up applying for about 80 scholarships. 80. 80. Now, I didn't get the first, like, 50-something. Well, obviously, I didn't get all of them, but why am I telling you this? It's important to learn how to sell your story to somebody else, which is why writing is so important. I'm hard-headed. 
If I think I could do something, off rip, I just think I could do it. And you got to know how to take criticism. College taught me that. How a lot of high school students, especially me when I was in high school, if somebody told me I was doing something wrong, I'm like, they just hating. Oh, the teacher said you got to work on your essay. I'm like, oh, she a hater, bro. It's the best essay in the class. Like, how I got a 70 is because she don't like me. That was me. Oh, the teacher don't like me. Nah, I'm failing. I was the teacher don't like me. Like, so I worked on my writing skills because that first L I took, I applied for like a $10,000 scholarship. Dub took the L. They was like, nah. Then the second scholarship, they was like, nah. The third scholarship, they was like, nah. But my, that fourth scholarship, that $100 scholarship, $100 made me bounce back. So I'm applying, I'm applying, I'm working on my essay, I'm applying, I'm working on my essay. I got a second scholarship. I got a third scholarship. I got a fourth scholarship. Now I can stand in front of you and say that I've been awarded eight scholarships. Eight. Eight. But it gets better. And I'm not telling you this to brag. Bless you. I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this because it's leading into this video, because I'm not going to stand up in front of you and talk for the whole time. I received a phone call sophomore year because I told you I was working hard, right? I got those grades up. I got this phone call, and I was on spring break, and I was sitting at the bus stop. And I remember because the lady on the phone was like, hi, are you sitting down? I'm like, type of question? I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting down. She's like, okay, because we have something really important to tell you. I'm like, all right, what's up? But we need to know if you're sitting down. Like, me lying. I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting down. That's why. What happened? Well, you've been awarded a scholarship. Now, at this point in time, sophomore year, you know, the, the kid won a couple scholarships already. So what's, you know, what's a thousand, two thousand dollars, right? So she's like, this scholarship is going to require you to be on BET. I'm like, wait, wait, pause. Heard you. I'm taking the headphones out. Like, what you, wait, what you said? Can you say that again? Now I'm actually on the phone. Like, she's like, well, you're going to be on BET. I'm like, I, right, but you didn't tell me how much the scholarship is for. Well, we have to fly you from where you are to Atlanta, Georgia, because we have to film you. And we, I'm like, but, because I had applied for all these scholarships. I wasn't expecting to actually win. Of course, when you apply, you want to, you know, be awarded the scholarship, but you don't really think you're going to win all of them, especially the big, big, you know, the actual bag. So I'm like, well, how much is the scholarship? And she's like, $25,000. I'm like, what you say? <laughs> how much? $25,000. I'm from Yonkers, New York. I'm not even from New York City. My father's from the Bronx. All my family is in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan. I'm not from out here, okay? So for me to be from Yonkers, New York, in Westchester County, and win a $25,000 scholarship, a $25,000, like, I still say that to this day, and I still think they might have messed up. I'm like, yo, bro, I won 25 Gs. Like, I don't even know how I won, to be honest. But I worked on that essay, and that essay told a story. It was about my high school experience. It was me. So after spring break, they flew me from South Carolina, where I go to school, to Atlanta, Georgia. When I tell you they had a makeup artist for the kid when I got there, you know, in New York, everybody think they could do makeup, but I had like the professional, legit makeup artist. I'm all on the gram, like, yo, this is G. Like, oh, y'all girls think y'all do makeup. I actually got a makeup artist. Yo, what's up? So, all of this is going on. Then they tell me we have to bring cameras to your school because you're gonna be on BET and we wanna record you on campus. Let me tell y'all something, fellas, if she curved you, or if she said you was ugly last week, and you have media cameras following you around campus, like when you see that big camera following you around with the, with the you know, the speaker thing and all, yeah, you're going to go from looking like Flavor Flav like me to like August Alcina in 24 hours. <laughs> I kid you not. Like you, all the people who, you know, that wasn't really messing with you, hi, Dennis, how you been? Why you so antisocial? Like you don't talk to nobody. <laughs> like, no, like, what's, I'm like, okay. So they told me that I had the fee waiver. Anybody I wanted to be on TV with me, all I had to do was sign a fee waiver. When I tell you I'm walking around like I got the keys to more success, like, yeah, yo, bro, you want to be on TV, bro? Yo, come talk to me, bro. I got you. Yo, sign your name, bro. Now nah, I got you, bro. Got you. So all this is going on. Then they say, we got to fly you back for the show. I'm like, cool. But you can't tell nobody. I'm from New York. Like, we tell everybody everything. How you, <laughs> how you going to tell me I can't tell nobody I'm going to be on BET? Like, I, would t I told everybody when I went to college, now I'm about to be on BET. What you mean I can't tell nobody? I'm telling everybody. I'm on the gram like, yeah, yo, guess what happened? So I'm like, all right. They're like, we'll tell you when it's time to promote. They fly me to Atlanta, Georgia for the show. They said it's called the Evening of Stars Scholarship. I'm from New York. I've seen a couple, you know, stars before. It was, it was a celebrity to me, right? I've seen Jada Kiss before, you know? So I'm like, cool. I land. They said, we'll bring any guest you want from anywhere in the country to be with you. So off rip, 
I don't know how y'all feel about y'all family, but off rip, I love my mother. So some of y'all see y'all father, y'all uncles, y'all grandmothers, y'all abuelitos, you know, abuelitos, y'all tu sabe. Me, it's my mother. So I have my mother flown with me. They fly her from New York. She takes off a couple days of work. They fly me from South Carolina in school. I get the excuses and all that. I'm telling everybody, yeah, I'm about to be on BET. I can't really be in class right now. So I get there. As soon as I land, they give me an envelope. And I open this envelope. And there's nothing but bread inside this envelope. Envelope like this big. And I'm looking at my mom. Now, some of y'all, you know, you land there like, hi, nice to meet you. They give you an envelope. Y'all were just taking and going about your business. I'm nice, OK? I got to ask questions. So I'm like, hi. Excuse me, Dennis Richman. Um, what am I doing with this envelope? Like, why did you give me an envelope full of money? Oh, that's your envelope. That's um, everything you'll need for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next few days. I'm like, Ma, do you see how much money they gave me for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I'm from New York. I'm like, Ma, I have a bagel or a butter roll. Like, I'm not spending all this on, like, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I'm good. I raised, I'm like, me again, another question. What do we do with the extra money? Because I, I don't know if they need receipts or nothing. She's like, oh, no, it's yours. You keep it. It's whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to the mall, I'm taking cabs, I'm all up and down Peachtree Street. The cab driver's like, oh, you know, it's a little expensive to take a cab from here all the way to the mall. I'm like, yo, bro, don't ever play yourself. Just drive, like, just, just drive, like. So I'm feeling like Hollywood, I'm all in Atlanta. I throw the blazer on and everything, like, oh, what's up, Atlanta? So all this is going on, right? Then we go to rehearsal, and it's rehearsal time. They have a big cardboard cutout of me. Like, I'm like, yo. Shout out to BET, I really doing it big. Big cardboard cutout of me in a chair in the auditorium next to another big cardboard cutout of a celebrity that y'all know. Next to another big cardboard cutout of a celebrity that y'all know. Surrounded by like 30 more celebs. And I'm like, man, I know they don't want me to tell nobody, but like, yo, I'm taking pictures of this. <laughs> nobody gonna believe it. So I, got, I still got the pictures too. I'm like, okay, it's time for the show. We have rehearsals and everything. You walk this way, you walk that way, you walk. Now, I'm going to tell y'all now, I was so overwhelmed by the whole thing because life works out crazy. I had lost my grandmother. God made her soul rest in peace like a month or two right before I was on TV. So to know that I was doing it big and my grandma wasn't even here was crazy. So I ended up walking like the wrong way coming off the stage. But nothing but celebs, right? Nothing but celebs. Now, the reason I told you that is because sometimes in life something traumatic might happen to you, but you still got to keep going though. So when you lose that loved one, when you lose that person, you can't let that hold you down. You got to think, would they want me to cry over them all the time? Or would they want me to keep going? So I'm not saying you can't cry, but you got to know why you're doing it. So I'm like, all right, now it's time for the show. I walk in, my mother walks in, all the other students who've been awarded walk in, even the Star Scholarship, and a group of women walk in. Now, I don't watch TV like that, let alone reality shows. And neither does my mom, but she knows a little bit more than me, which is crazy, because you would think I would know about those shows. So all these women walk in, and my mom's like, you know who they are, right? I'm like, no. She's like, that's the Braxton family. And I'm like, heard you. Like, Tamar and Tom, oh, I thought it's Tamar. Everything looks good. So now you know what's going on. Like, all the Braxtons are here. Then Neo walks in. And you know Neo Ball, so we had the hat on and all that, but <laughs> Neo walks in. Then Jermaine Dupri walks in. I'm like, oh my, they legit got a couple celebrities out here now. Like, I don't know if y'all familiar with the show Empire, but the cast of Empire walks in. And they sitting right in front of me. Like, I could like touch the dude, like, yo, bro, I get a selfie with you? Yeah, no problem. I'm like, heard you. All these celebrities start walking in, like legit Hollywood celebs. Now, I'm feeling myself, because I'm like, ma, I'm telling you, if I don't get some pictures tonight, I'm going to be OD famous now, I'm taking pictures with everybody. That day, when it was all said and done, when they flew me back to campus, and I'm back at school, that whole week, that whole week, fellas, that whole week. Hi, Dennis, we see you on TV. Like, we was all watching you. Like, you look so good with your little suit on or whatever. What you doing later? Cause you really don't be talking to nobody. Like, you know, we know that you really, that whole week. Yo, bro, yo, you know I'm trying to push this mixtape, bro. Yo, what's good? Like, what's going on, bro? You know I make music. Like, yo, what's up? Like, the whole week. What time, how much longer I have this period? Cool. So all this is going on. Why did I tell y'all that story? I told y'all this story because of this. If I could do that, and I'm from Yonkers, New York, there's no reason why any one of you can't do what I did. All you have to do is work hard and want it bad enough. All you have to do is work hard and want it bad enough. Like, there's nothing that you cannot do. I'm telling you, if you really want it, you could do it. 
Don't let anybody tell you. They didn't want me to come to Truman. They didn't want me to come here. I told my boys, yo, let's go to this school. Let's talk about, nah, bro, nah, nobody came to high school to talk to me about college. I'm not doing that. Nah, I want to, like, the small, the thing that you think would be the smallest thing is what everybody makes the most hype over. So, I don't really want to talk to y'all no more. I was like, what if I could take a camera and record my college experience? But, like, fellas, like, show y'all some of the young ladies I'm talking about. Because, you know, that's the brunch. I think I'm lying until I show y'all. Ladies, what if I could show y'all some of the dudes that, you know, these college girls start tripping over, like, you know, the ones that y'all really want to, you know, be in a relationship with, and the ones y'all want to, you know. So I was like, what if I could show y'all the video or make a video of me leaving New York, going to South Carolina, being on TV, and having other people across the country tell y'all why college is important. I'm in East New York, Brooklyn. I'm in Brownsville, Brooklyn. They all love this video. They went crazy. I'm in Harlem, 125, 145. Harlem went crazy. I'm in Mount Vernon. I'm in Yonkers. All loved it. So... I don't know how the Bronx is going to feel, because, you know, y'all might be a little tough crowd, but y'all want to see the video? Yeah. Y'all want to see the video? Yeah. It's like nine minutes. So, it's my college experience. To show y'all, you know, what the kid is talking about. And, um, yeah, so, you know, it's me leaving New York, going to South Carolina. May I please write, may I please write something on your board? Thank you so much. I'm gonna take this off. I don't think I need it no more. Thank you so much. <laughs>